And now we come to Psalms 51, if you would please, for the reading of God's Word, if you'll stand with me. It says, Psalms 51, verses 1 through 15, says, Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. And I want you to remember what he said a while ago. He said, that man's got to die. That man's got to be killed for doing that awful offense. But he's now crying out to God now, and he's saying, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto thy multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part that thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me now with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation." And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day you've given us. We ask you to bless each one, bless the reading of God's Word. Now give us the words to say that we may learn something from thy Word, and we may take something away from this service today that we will apply it to our lives. Those that are lost among us, Lord, send the Holy Spirit to dwell with them. And those, Lord, that may be, have, uh, be miserable and have sin in their life today, send that Holy Spirit to them to Purge them that they may get things right with you. Be with those where sickness is and death have come in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated if you like. Now, I want you to notice the change of heart. I want you to notice the change of the tone. I want you to notice all the whole change of what happened here now. He's wanting to have this man killed back in Second Samuel over there. But now that he's got a chance to uh, be uh, uh, think about it a while and take a think on it here a while, now what does he do? He knows the God that he serves. And he uh, trusts the God that he serves. And he comes to him and he says for him, ask for him to have mercy upon him. Now, you know what? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. That's what mercy is all about. Now, he deserved justice is what he deserved. And justice would have got him put, uh, gave, got him killed at that time, would have got him put to death. But now he wants mercy. And he wants mercy from a merciful God. This morning, church, I'm going to tell you something. We ever want one this morning and under the sound of my voice this morning we want mercy we don't want justice we want mercy from a merciful God this morning because we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God we've all done things that we uh, uh, that we're not proud of we've all said things that we're not proud of and and as those uh, secret sins as I told you a while ago we've all got some of those that we're not proud of and those things will haunt you and those things will come back at you until you make all those things right with this merciful God that I'm talking about this morning and that right there is the theme of what I told you a while ago that we don't have any power and we can't pray and we can't praise and we can't uh, uh, see people healed, delivered and set free in the name of Jesus because we don't have any power with God because we've got sin in our life and we've got sin in our heart this morning. Now you say well preacher I, I would have hoped that all the good singing you'd talk 
talk about heaven. Well, I will here just in a minute, but bear with me. We've got to get this over with first. We've got to get the business of uh, at hand over with first because we've got to get right with God before we're going to ever, ever see our church, our people, and all praising God like never before. You say, oh, we praise praising God real good a while ago, preacher. I'm going to tell you, folks, if we could all get our hearts cleaned out this morning and we could all get right with God, get rid of all the secret things in our life this morning, you hadn't seen praise like you'll see when you get rid of all of that and get right with God to where you can have a personal, a personal relationship with one true God that is merciful, that is loving, and that is kind this morning. So I want to show you a few things if I can in the time that I've got this morning. Oh, David, this is what I call David's river. Everybody's talking about revival and all. Everybody's talking about uh, uh, getting revived up. Well, I'm going to tell you, this is David's revival is what this is right here in Psalms 51. Oh, David had had it long enough. He had put up with it long enough. And what had happened was he said, man, I've got to do something. I've got to do something about this situation. And I know who to go to to get things done. I know to go to God and and God's going to hear my cry, and he's going to hear my prayer. And so here he goes, and he says, have mercy upon me. But here now, first thing, no, he became sorry for his sin. Folks, you can't get forgiveness for something that you're not sorry for. You can't get forgiveness if you tell someone, oh, I'm sorry, and don't mean it there. It does not mean a hill of beans. But if you truly, in your heart, that your heart hurts because you did something that was wrong, to someone, then and only then will it become effective and only then will that relationship be renewed. That's the way it is with God this morning. If you say, God, I'm sorry that I just got caught. That doesn't make the difference right there. God doesn't hear that because God does not, uh, God does not want to hear that you're just sorry because you got caught. He wants to hear you're sorry because it hurts within. And you know what happens? When you sin and when you come short of the glory of God, not only do you sin against uh, someone else if you do something as he did here, not only that, but you are sinning against the Most High God and sin hurts God this morning. But he said he became sorry for his sins. Look at number 51. It says here, uh, verse 50, 51 and 1. I'll get it in a minute there. He said, have come, have mercy upon me, and I blot out thy transgressions. In other words, I am sorry for what I've done. Now I need to get forgiveness, and I need to get clean of the sin that I've got. Church, when we get, when we get sorry for our sins, and we come wholeheartedly wanting forgiveness of what we've done against the most high God then and only then will you see revival break out Amen. then and only then well, you see it. So he, got, he became sorry for him. It says here, uh, uh, also he become aware of his sins. He says, wash me. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me. He said, I know exactly what I've done. Now, God, you can wash me. You're the only one that can cleanse. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but that precious blood. Amen. So he, he become aware of his sins. And then also, too, he said, he, he acknowledged them. He said, man, against thee and thee only have I sinned. In verse number four, he said, I know exactly who I've sinned against. I've sinned against you, and I've done this evil thing, and that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and clear when thou judgest. He said, I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt who that I have sinned against. And he said, I know what you can do. I know that you could strike me out at any time. I know that you would, could do that. But I know that you are kind. I know that you're merciful. I know you're loving. And I know, Lord, that if I come to you humble as a little child, that you'll forgive me of these transgressions and you'll put my foot back on the solid rock and I can walk again. I can talk again. I can praise you again. I can dance in the 
street again. Folks, we're not worshiping like we once did because we're not living like we once did. We're not worshiping like we once did because we're not praising God like we once did. Oh, you say, well, preacher, I'm not interested in that. Well, I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I change this not. And you say, oh, well, preacher, we got to stay with the times. Well, you know what? This word right here, this word said it don't change at all. This word's the same as it was 2,000 years ago. And guess what? It'll be the same word of God until Jesus comes back. It'll be the same word of God. And we may preach it in different forms. We may sing it in different forms. But I'm telling you, the reading of God's word is going to be the same until it comes back. And that it says that sin is sin. And that means that when you sin and come short, you have to get forgiveness from a one merciful God this morning. Oh, but he became sorry for his sins. He went through all the things. He got convicted. He went and confessed. He had uh, repentance. And now he says he wants to be cleaned of it. In verse number 7, purge me, purge me, clean me. I know who can clean you this morning. I can't clean you. I can't clean you this morning. I can't clean you up. I can pray for you, but I can't do it. But I know one who can this morning. I know one that will forgive you this morning. I know one that will get your, give you, renew as you, renew in you a new spirit and will renew you that back to where you was better than what you was to start with. And that's Jesus Christ this morning. Second thing I want you to look at, he became sick of himself. You say, what do you mean, preacher? He's the king. He's the king. He's got everything. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. Not money will buy you everything. I said not money will buy you everything. There's a lot of miserable rich folks out there today. And there's a lot of happy poor folks. Amen. A lot of happy poor folks going to the house of God this morning with this what they barely got on their back right there. Not much money or not much uh, fame or not much uh, anything there. But they went to God's house this morning and they said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to praise the one that saved me. I'm going into the house of the Lord. And if it's dancing in the, in the hallway or if it's praising his name, by waving my hand or amen in the preacher or the teacher or the singing. I'm praising you with everything in me. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that can't say that this morning. A lot of people is not doing that this morning. And that's what I want us to do at New Beverly Baptist Church. I want us to be able to praise Him. I want us to be happy. I want us to now happy. You say happy, preacher. You're going to get in the part in a minute. You're going to talk about joy. Well, happy is happening. That's what I started to say. Happy is happenings right now. And oh, I'm going to tell you something. Happy is good. But I'm going to tell you it's only temporary. It's only temporary. You get happy for a minute and 15 minutes, you won't be happy. You know, you won't be happy. But joy, you can be have joy in your heart and go through the worst valley that you've ever gone through in your life. And like Brother Doug's fixing to go through uh, starting today and all in the worst valley the battle that you've ever fought and still have joy in your heart and still have the peace that passes all understanding and still have the know that Jesus Christ is in full control this morning. But anyway, he became sick of himself. It's this king. He became sick of himself. You say, where do you get that at, preacher? Verse number 10. He says, create in me a clean heart. Oh, God. Well, oh, God, clean, uh, create in me a clean heart. Listen, he wants more than forgiveness. He wants a new, brand new. He wants more than what he had. Folks, I wish we had a house full of church people this morning that would say that I've been saved, but I got got sin in my life and God I want you to renew me and give me a new start me afresh this morning start me all over Amen. oh he said listen not only that not only that did he have sick of a dirty heart he was sick of a wrong spirit 
Now, Abel talked about that this morning, about the spirit, uh, about a bad spirit. But I'm going to tell you, verse number 10 also says, and renew a right spirit within me. I'm going to tell you, you fool with somebody that's got an evil spirit. You fool with somebody that's got a wrong spirit. And I'm going to tell you, ain't no worse than fooling with the devil himself. Hey, some, hey, some women and they some men. I won't even stop their men. I won't say they some men and they some women that's so full of the devil that you can't even be around them five minutes till you want to get away from them. Amen. I started to say, if you don't holler amen, I know I ain't don't want to know some of them. And has to fool with some of them. Amen. But I'm telling you, he says now, here the king is crying out. Ah, oh, renew a right spirit within me. Oh, renew a right spirit to where that I will treat my brothers and sisters right. Oh, that I will serve God again. Oh, that I can dance in the streets again. Oh, that I can praise God again. Oh, that I will not take advantage of the poor folks again. That's the king saying that this morning. He's saying that, but you know what? We need to take that word and that uh, verse right after creating us a clean heart and renew us a right spirit this morning. He was sick of the fear of being a castaway. See, verse 11 says, cast me not away. He was afraid. He knew. He knew what it was to be in the presence of God. He knew what a wonderful feeling that it was. To get in a good meeting in the temple. He knew what it was to get in the streets and praise God. He knew what it was. There's nothing like it. And folks, I'm going to tell you, if you're a born again child of God, and if you've ever witnessed the moving power of the Holy Spirit of God, if you've ever felt that tingle, if you've ever felt that move, if you've ever felt that good feeling that comes over you when you praise and worship God, if you've ever experienced that, there ain't nothing like it. You can't buy it. You can't steal it. You can't get it anywhere at all except through the power of the moving of the Holy Spirit of God this morning. And it's not something you can put on and turn on and turn off. Sometimes I, you go in some of these places and all, and they say, well, up, and we'll get a rock band going, and we'll get smoke going, and we'll say we're praising God in the Spirit. I'm going to tell you something another. When the Spirit of God moves upon people, you'll see them do stuff that they ain't never done before. You'll see them act like they, that they ain't never act before. You'll see men and women shouting the praises of God. You'll see uh, men and women uh, speaking. You'll see men and women doing things like you ain't never seen before when the move of that Holy Spirit comes upon them. And I'm telling you, he was afraid he's God, he, God was going to take him away from all that. Because he said unto him, cast me not away from thy presence. And think about it for just a minute. Think about it. Think about if your church and your, ch your, your church and the Holy Spirit of God was taken away from you this morning. And let me tell you why, if I could for just a minute. I'll, I'll finish on time. But let me tell you why for just a minute here. He had saw his one that he had came after, the old Saul. He had saw in the Old Testament time, he had saw Saul, God remove the power of the Holy Spirit from Saul. And he said, man, I don't want to be like him. I don't want that taken away from me because I know exactly what that makes me feel like, walk like, talk like, act like, and I don't want you to take that away from me, Lord. I'll do anything. I'm willing to do anything that you don't remove the Holy Spirit from me. Amen. And then also, too, not only did he fear of being a castaway, he was sick of having no joy. And here's why I want to stop just a second. I want you to know this morning the church, church folks this morning, sit in church pews all over the country. I won't even stop for the town or the city all over the country this morning. And they don't have any joy in their heart. 
They don't have any joy down deep inside of them. They're letting the devil, they're letting circumstances take over in their life. And they're not being ruled by the power of the Holy Spirit of God and the promise of God that no matter what comes again, no weapon formed against me shall prosper this morning. I'm telling you this morning that that makes me have joy this morning. It don't make any difference if it's sickness. It don't make make any difference if what it is this morning that nothing nothing this morning is more powerful than the God we serve today I love the part in Romans 8 uh, in Romans 8 where it says that there's absolutely nothing can separate me from the love of God there's nothing nothing too high nothing too low nothing too powerful that can separate me from the love of God you say, well, circumstances is bad, preacher. Well, hang on. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord's going to deliver them out of them all. Oh, listen. He's sick of having no joy. He was sick of having no, he was sick of not having that power with God like he once had. I've seen the church come and pray. I've seen the church come and agree, touching and agreeing. And I've seen mountains move. I've seen people healed, delivered, and set free. I've seen buildings go up. I've said, hey, look, that brother just asked me this morning. He hadn't got to be back. He asked me this morning, said, what happened about the baptistry? And he gave uh, 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 generously to the baptistry fund, too. But he said, what happened about the baptistry fund? I said, well... I said, look at here, we needed $20,000. I said, it's posted right back there. And that's a little bit shy because another thing or two come in. It was over $21,000. The Lord just put in the pot all of a sudden. Jesus on the mainland, tell